we're back again. We're talking about four-point needle technique. And so for the YouTube channel, I made a video about four-point needle technique. And this was just because this is something I feel like, at least when I went to school, we kind of tacked this on to the end of points three. And they were like, this might be, a, you might get one or two questions about this on the board. So here's this technique. And that's kind of all we got. But yeah, I've honestly never really used it all that much in clinic. I think I've just never had the courage to use four needles as a treatment. Um, but from our last conversation, what something that was really interesting to me was the history of this technique. Where did this Korean four point needle technique come from? So I, I think from the history, there's many different books at this. I mean, we'll start with the first piece. It's, it's called Korean Four Needle Technique. And the history of that was actually off of an esoteric Buddhist monk called Sa'am. Now, we don't know if this person was real or not. There's no records, technically. However, they do put the techniques to this uh, monk of esoteric Buddhism. And he went into a cave, like every other Buddhist monk, and follows that same trajectory and says he, he basically went, I'm done with society. I need to be enlightened. That was kind of the take on it. So then he goes into this cave, stares at the wall, very similar to Bodhidharma on that, if anyone knows, like, that Shaolin. Yeah, I was going to say, so he didn't invent Kung Fu. He invented an acupuncture technique. Right, he invented an acupuncture <laughs> technique staring at the wall. Yeah. So I'm like, good job, man, good job. So yeah. he, he, he was already educated as, like, in medical classics, so he just kept re-going into them. And then, you know, strange things happened. He got illuminated. He comes out of the cave and he says, I got this four needle technique. And then he starts applying it. Now, history has a way of making people forget things. And we don't have any historical records. That's the mythology around it. And then closer toward, I, I can't remember the date, but it's closer to like our modern era, like 19 something. Uh, a Korean scholar starts looking into these legends and mythologies of Sa'am and starts to form like, well, does this relate to the I Ching in the Book of Changes? Uh, do, how do we actually use these techniques in a practical way? So he starts to map things in a way where uh, they are connected to psychological states and states of the mind. Going back to that, this system is used to cultivate um, enlightenment. So he starts breaking it down that way and starts experimenting. And then we have at least five, uh, four different charts, I should say, of how to use these techniques. The tonification and sedation, that's very common in TCM. The other thing that people don't generally hear is the cooling system and the warming system. Yeah, that I don't think we ever learned. So that's where you get that idea of this yin and yang balancing within the system and it's been mapped to these five shoe points, each representing an element, representing a fractal within oneself and the organ connections of how they can work together. And then again, that's a Korean side of things. However, about the same time that this Sa'am legend comes about, we also have people in Japan talking about something very similar. So we don't know historically if there was an overlap, if there was one person in particular. And then if we look at China, we have the Nanjing with the difficulty, uh, classics of difficulty there, where they have this discussion and they start breaking it down that way too. So when you say he was an esoteric Buddhist, like what, what does that mean? How is that different from a regular Buddhist? And when you say this is an enlightenment technique, what, I guess, what does that mean? Does that mean if you meditate on this technique, you can become enlightened or is that actually, that, yes. Or does yes. that mean that if you do the four needles on me, you can flip my enlightenment switch and I can just say, Hey Zach, do this four needles to enlighten me. Actually, it is like that. It is closer to what you just said, Nicholas. <laughs> okay. okay. So this is where, I mean, we, we can break this down into uh, many different facets. So the first thing, what is an esoteric Buddhist monk? It's actually a monk that actually can get results. That's the first thing I'm going to say. They can do uh, priestly rites and they could act as a conduit for um, essentially the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and other spirits in the Buddhist realms. And they can actually provide blessings that are results driven. So, so, that, so that's different than just following the Four Noble Truths or correct. reading the philosophy. You're like this is someone that actually walks the to... talk and could be viewed as a Buddha or Bodhisattva on this physical okay. plane because they've trained their skill sets uh, to become that. So okay. that's where he's coming from first and foremost as an esoteric Buddhist uh, sect of practice of Buddhism. Uh, it does have the philosophical pieces like the Four Noble Truths. We can connect that to actually the Four Needle Technique actually too directly mm. and um, that's on the higher sphere within the buddhist tradition and um, when it comes down to more of a mundane level this is 
on the point where you can recognize these points within yourselves and saw meditated and didn't really do the needles he just meditated on the points because remember two points are for tofication two points are for uh, sedation so if you understand that concept inhale is tofication exhale is sedation so you can meditate on two points on the body, whatever those tonification points are, and you can exhale at the points where um, you're sedating. And that is a Qigong technique directly. This is why it is an enlightenment system within Buddhism to ease the suffering, because you can directly work on yourself first and foremost to recognize what those reactions are. Then you can replicate that and do that on somebody else. So when you use this technique in clinic, like what situations would you use this technique as opposed to any other technique that we could use like if i if someone has spleen chi deficiency i could just